just have a, a brief statement that we'd like to read just to our response to our response to uh, Ralph Young. And then it's also a message I would say to the people of Edmonton about sort of why uh, we feel it's important to occupy uh, and then also some of the, the things that it would take for us to leave voluntarily, some of the changes that we'd like to see make. So uh, without further ado, uh, we'll start reading the statement. Hi. Dear Ralph Young, we regret that you have chosen not to accept our offer of mediation and you are no longer open to dialogue. Instead, you are choosing to push us towards a forceful eviction and are threatening to personally sue individuals for costs. We wanted to take this moment to explain to you and everyone watching some of the reasons that we began this occupation and what actions we would like to see take place so that it can come to a voluntary end. We began the occupation on October 15th because the call that was and is being heard around the world resonated with us. A call not just for minor tweaks, but a call big enough to fill our hearts and dreams. This call was born from the inequities of systems that continue to benefit the richest few, the 1% at the expense of the rest of us, the 99%. The crimes occurring against regular people aren't just happening in New York or across America. But in countries and cities all over the world, including Canada and Edmonton, the themes of corporate control of political institutions, growing inequity, and environmental destruction ring true here, just as they do in New York. <coughs> Corporations have taken over our world, but by supporting each other and working in cities across the planet, we hope to take it back. Athens, we need to see an order for us to leave willingly. One. We want to see our government officials actually come and participate in general assemblies and the occupation. We want to see them in interact with our movement rather than try to ignore it, disregard it, or actively try to undermine it. Number two, if the city of Edmonton can give over $100 million in subsidies to a billionaire conglomerate, we should also be able to invest in city services, not cut them. We would like to see the $10.5 million in city service cuts el eliminated and the property tax hike apply not only to Edm Edmontonians, but to, uh, but to the Gates group as well. Number three, we want to see an end to the corporate influence of our democratic process. In Alberta, this means ending the cozy relationship the government has with oil industry. We want independent monitoring, a fair royal royalty regime, and an, op and an end to an open door policy that the government has with oil representatives. We want a government, not a public re relations firm. No. We want to, number four, we want to see wages, pensions, employment insurance, social assistance, workers' compensation, age and disability benefits, and minimum index to the average increase in salary and bonuses for the top 10 CEOs in this country. We also want to see the gap between the richest 100 Canadian CEO salaries, which is $6.6 .6 million in 2009, and the minimum wage decrease. Number five, we want to see fully funded public health care and pharmaceutical programs. Number six, we want to see free post-secondary educations. Education is a, is a right, and anyone that has the desire to better themselves by going to college or university should be able to do so regardless of income and, and without being saddled with huge student debt. Number seven, we want to see all free trade agreements adhered to the country with the most stringent environmental and labor laws, not the worst. For example, NAFTA's chapter 11 given corporation uh, NAFTA's chapter 11 given corporations in one country the right to sue a foreign government over potential loss of profit regardless of the environmental consequences should be abolished. Number 8 Canada signed a Universal Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. Now, we want our government to implement it by giving our First, pe First Nations peoples all rights contained within it, including the right to free, right to free prior and informed consent and all energy developments on Indigenous territories. This is not a comprehensive list of what we want or what we need, but it is a start. It's a few steps further along the road we need to travel. When you look at this list, you may think we are idealist. That may be so, but we think that maybe the world needs a little bit more ide idealism, not a little less. 